Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now before we dive in and start messing around with these spherical bearings and making some rose jointed arms, I wanted to answer a couple of your questions first. First question, the Volvo. What is it being built for? The plan is to enter this car into thunder saloons. A lot of you who subscribe probably subscribe to Nick at Team Pro Racing. He's doing pretty well in this year's championship with just two races go one weekend at Donington. He could clinch the championship, so good luck to Nick. Now, obviously there is a lot to do on this car. I don't expect that I'll get it ready for the first round next year or the second or even the third, but the final round of Thunders next year is at Thruxton, which is probably my most local circuit. Maybe Goodwood is, but it's pretty local. I've been there a number of times. I've been there in this car, so it's a track that I already know, and that's kind of the goal, to get this ready for then. Obviously, I'd like to get the car ready, up and running, and to track days a lot sooner than that, but I don't want to enter it straight into a race, having not been tested first, so that's the goal. I still need to get my race license first, but of course, I'll be sharing that experience with you guys too. The next question that you guys have been asking is whether Removing all of this sound deadening has been worth it. Now, as you can see, the whole car has been stripped of it, all in the back there. It's all been cleaned down. It's all looking nice. The one bit that doesn't look nice is on the bulkhead. I've tried to take some of that off. You can see it there. It's not really going to get seen anyway. I might give it another quick go with a white spirit, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. This bit will be receiving some paint. I'm not too sure wherever I'm going to go. Satin black kit or red. I'll be honest, it probably will stay red just because then I don't have to do the entire interior. Anyway, this is the bag full of the sound deadening. And as you can see, it's a decent sized bag and I've not weighed it yet, but there's quite, there's quite a lot there. Now I do have a set of scales in the garage. I'm gonna chuck it on there, see how much this weighs. But before I show you that, have a guess. I have not weighed this myself yet. It's a fairly heavy bag. I reckon it's probably, it's gotta be over 10 kilos. I don't think it's 20 kilos, 15, 15 kilos maybe, maybe a little bit less than that. But there's a decent amount of weight there. So now it's your turn. Pause the video, drop a comment down below See what you think this weighs yeah, in a few moments time. You'll find out if you're right. So there we go. What does that look like? That looks like probably 13 and a half kilos, maybe 14. That's quite a bit actually. So there we go. 13 and a half kilos, 14 kilos there or thereabouts. Obviously not the most accurate scales, but it gives you some idea of how much that stuff actually weigh and would i say it was worth it well it was a pain in the ass to remove but 14 kilos that's probably about a third of a tank maybe even more than that so i'd say yeah definitely that's a decent amount of weight to remove the car without really changing anything definitely worthwhile finally before i crack on with this video i'd like to say thank you to the subscribers out there now we are steadily growing we have got around about 1800 subscribers and uh, that's grown more recently probably because I'm making videos now, but you guys seem to enjoy the content. And if you do, please do drop a comment down below. It's really great to hear from you guys, your opinions, what you think about what I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Of course, if you're not subscribed, why haven't you done so? Because I think on average, only about 30% of viewers of my videos are actually subscribed. So please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Cheers. Let's get on with this video. What do we have here on the workbench? Well, obviously this is one of the original control arms from the rear of this. And these are some fancy looking CNC aluminium ones. And these are made in the very best Chineseium. So they were relatively cheap. They're about hundred pounds off eBay. They originally came with rubber bushes either end, as you can see there. But this one here, you can see it's slightly different, has got a spherical bearing. And that is the plan for today's video. I want to change everything on the rear end to a solid spherical bearing of some description. Now you can see I've got a load of rod ends here, slightly different up here, I'll get into that in a minute. I've got some bearings here and they are to fit in either end of these. So they're 35 mil on the outside, 
18 mil on the inside these are also m18 so in here m18 these are actually left hand threaded and standard thread on these ones here and you can see there there is a threaded collar on that which is going to go inside this bit of cds tubing and i'm going to cut that push that in weld it and put one either end left and right thread so i can adjust them so you can see this arm that is one that i had to cut off because that has completely seized itself inside there these were poly bushed so they are upgraded but they've been in there for so long now that yeah they're absolutely fused in there i have got one of these tubes out and it is really rusty i think here you go here is an example of one that has come out of this is the uh, trailing arm bush which i've just pressed out they're absolutely knackered i will also be replacing this with a spherical bearing but a bit of extra work to go into this one i'll cover that very shortly right so this one goes in the bin get that out the way now first things first these don't normally look like this there's normally a bar that runs through the center of this bush funnily enough just like that so these are actually original and i have ripped them out of there there and there and on the lathe i've turned them down to 18.02 mil and now they are a tight press fit into the rod end so they shouldn't move they are really tight and they don't take any lateral load it is kind of in and out and they go on to I'll show you an example under here just in there goes like that so these are going to be fully adjustable and i can actually buy these a company called hard race sell them with spherical bearings they are best part of 300 pounds for a pair so i'd need two pairs of them 600 pounds to me that sounds quite expensive and I expect if they wear out, there's no sort of replacement. So you'd probably have to buy another new pair. Whereas I have bought all of the components, these four left-handed thread rod ends, uh, right-handed thread rod ends, these ones here for the trailing arms. I think all in all, we're probably running at about 250 quid so far. So not even amounting up to the cost of one pair of these arms so far making my own does mean that i can replace these individually they are relatively cheap buying one of them anyway um, 15 to 20 pounds i think it was they are the ultra high performance ones for motorsport use so uh yeah they should do the business anyway that's enough talking from me for the minute it's time for a time lapse
Okay guys, fast forward almost two months since I started this video. I can't believe the time has gone so quickly, but I've just been busy. I suppose that's life. But I have been out in the garage a few times and this has taken slightly longer than I had anticipated. But this is how they look. If you look in there, I'll move that out. We've got a spherical bearing in there. And I made all of these little top hat spacers on the lathe so there's a set there set that end um, set up here as well these arms here which are completely adjustable now have been made to replace these bit of a confession i've made these so i've got one there and this one here it turns out that i don't actually need them because these are spherical bearings either end in there and there and then this is a spherical bearing either end there and I've done a spherical bearing in the front I was thinking how is that going to work with the geometry so obviously if you have three points then that will move independently and then this one will make it bind because that arm is a different length and anyway I had a quick look around and the only person that makes trailing arms for an S40 actually for a Evo 1, 2 and 3 with spherical bearings is Racefab in New Zealand. So I had a look at some of the photos of his tubular trailing arms and in the front he also runs a spherical bearing and I noticed that it's threaded and hollow and I, I did drop him a message and he said that this is not required because you can adjust the toe on here so that has a nut either side and you can effectively move this side to side on those nuts to adjust the toe so that is no longer required i wasted a bit of time on that but they are not available for sale because i have already earmarked these rod ends for another project so you can look forward to seeing that in the future uh, and this one up here obviously fully adjustable so it's a left and right thread so whilst it's on the car i can rotate this so it gets shorter and longer that will adjust the camber on here because that will go in and out i still will also have an eccentric bolt so there is adjustability on this now i'm not entirely happy with this arm i wish now that i just made my own because it would have been probably a lot easier because i could have done away with the eccentric bolt i could have used um, ends like this and also one thing to note I get this out of the way i have clearance this out a little bit more but this used to bind on there quite quite a lot without much angle and there's there's still not that much angle on there um, so i might have to clearance it out a little bit more or maybe take some of this shoulder off this arm uh, for it to clear so it is quite narrow in there because the original is quite narrow itself so um, this part here is a lot narrower than this part here um, so yeah it binds up on there which I'm not entirely happy with I didn't want to take too much material out of here so like I say I'll probably grind a little bit off the corner of there the front end of the trailing arm obviously used to have a bushing something like this um, which allowed a bit of movement in there which is why this arm would have worked if I'd kept a bushing but the idea is to get rid of any sort of bushing and for it all to be solid so this is a bit of six mil plate which i turned down on a lathe so it would fit in this uh, bushing housing i then cut a hole in the middle so i could fit a spherical bearing housing in that welded that in there and then welded this to the arm as well and then obviously you saw in the video me drilling out the middle of a m18 bit of threaded bar but yeah this is all looking pretty good. Really happy with how it came out, although not entirely happy with uh, how long it took. Now that this is all kind of done and dusted, these arms, this trailing arm, uh, and a few of the other suspension components over there are going to go off for blasting and powder coating, so they are going to be nice and shiny. Probably also worth noting that all the bolts that I've got in here at the minute are gonna go in the bin. I was going to salvage them, but they've been on the car for 20, over 20 years. They've had a hard life. They are corroded slightly. I have gone and bought brand new bolts. OEM, the proper ones, which cost 
quite a lot of money actually i think that's probably best part of 300 pounds in just bolts which you know that's a lot of money i mean i've decided to go spherical bearings on all of this because replacing all of these bushings probably would have cost me over 300 quid anyway i've actually done this cheaper than buying polyurethane bushes which i didn't want anyway tried to save some money somewhere had to spend it on bolts not particularly exciting but hey ho so guys that is the end of this video i really do have to apologize for the amount of time it has taken to film and edit this video and get this one out to you bit of a shame because i felt like i was on a bit of a roll getting some videos out fairly consistently every two to three weeks um like i said this one's probably taken six seven maybe even eight weeks since the last video so uh yeah sorry about that hope you've enjoyed this one if you have please hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you've got any questions drop them down in the comments below i will try to answer every single one of your questions that's it for now and i'll see you guys in the next one cheers